Hey, Pastor Steve Aldrin, I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. We're looking at what books belong in the New Testament. How do we know this? I know when I was in Bible college, Geisler Nix goes through the process. It was basically a church process. Um, I, I've kind of gone more toward the Edward F. Hill's understanding of that, that it was the church putting its imprimatur of the spirit. And I think the institutionalized church that by that time may have in large degree gone into quite a bit of falsity, just acknowledged what books the true church said because they had to because there were so many Christians as evidenced by uh, archaeology like in Turkey, underground city of 60,000 Christians and all this from the hundreds AD. So let's get started. So thanks for being here. We're on TextusReceptusBibles.com TextusReceptusBibles.com Which books belong in the New Testament? So in Colossians 4.16 the Apostle Paul wrote and when this epistle is read among you, cause it to be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. From Laodicea. Today we have the epistle to the Colossians in our Bible. We don't have the epistle to the Laodiceans. Who decided what went into the Bible? Now, make some comments there. I got a 1300s reproduction of a Wycliffe Bible. And I was surprised to find it had the epistle to the Laodiceans. And so I did some study in that and all that. But I don't think anybody claims that's right. Also, not everything that Paul necessarily wrote was scripture. And I don't have time to explain how that squares with Second uh, Peter chapter 3. But it does seem in First and Second Corinthians that there was actually another epistle Paul wrote. It's not scripture because a lot of people say, well, what if we found something Paul wrote? Well, I mean, he said bring the books and especially the parchments and all this. I mean, he may have written many things to many people. And just because he wrote it doesn't mean he was inspired. Just like, you know, Samuel may have given many prophecies, but only that which was in the mind of God from eternity past, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven was included in holy writ in the unfolding drama of redemption so when scholars talk about how a book qualified to be called scripture they list five characteristics called the laws of canonicity and yes i had to learn this in bible school you may have too but these characteristics are recognized in hindsight they weren't developed by some worldly group at a particular time in history before the books were written god alone decided which books he gave his inspiration we talk about the selected books in the Bible, refer to them as the canon, which is a Greek word meaning rule or measuring stick. Now, I know there's a book put out by Pentecostal Publishing House um, of uh, the Bible, its origin and use. Well, Brother Treese wrote a chapter on that. It's extremely good. Chapters five and six are very good. So how do you measure what books belong in the Bible? To develop the list of canonical books, the church created the laws of canonicity, which were the guidelines they used in accepting a book in the New Testament. Was the book written by a prophet of God? Was the writer confirmed by acts of God? Did the message tell the truth about God? Did it come with the power of God? There you go. Was it accepted by God's people? These five questions are used to determine which books measure up to being labeled divinely inspired they exhibit the marks of canonicity now i would go let's start at the bottom of that was it accepted by god's people i'd say that's extremely important Did it come to the power of god that's extraordinarily important does the message tell the truth about god that's right was the writer confirmed by acts of god and was a book written by a prophet of god now that last one i mean you'd have to say you could get into debates about that was nehemiah prophet and did he even write the book of Nehemiah? That would be another debate. Um, Ruth, was Ruth a prophetess? Was um, Esther a prophetess? And so you would have to go into that, you know. So uh, was Solomon a prophet per se? And uh, so these five, and maybe he was, these five questions are used to determine which books measure up 
the rule, the marks of canonicity. Now, the early third century, only a few of the books that we now call our New Testament were still in question. In western regions of the empire, the book of Hebrews faced opposition. And in the east, Revelation was unpopular. Eusebius of Caesarea, church historian of the 4th century, the 300s, records that James, and even Luther didn't like James, and Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther of the Protestants, but there's a big movement that doesn't like James to this day. Second Peter and Second Third John and Jude were the only books spoken against, though recognized by others. In 367 AD, Athanasius, yes, that Athanasius, gave us the doctrine of the Trinity in large part, exiled six times. The Bishop of Alexandria wrote an Easter letter that contained all 27 books of our present New Testament. 393, the Synod of Hippo affirmed our uh, as this uh, disappears from my screen here but the Council of Hippo gave it in 393 and that's interesting because um, the uh, Council of Hippo was Hippo is where Augustine lived. No, I found it. I got it back. Okay, so let's keep going. And in 397, the Council of Carthage published the same list. These are the books of canon recognized this day. They might be saying, well, you know, Catholics and Eastern Orthodox greatly outnumber Protestants around the world, basically, at least by some metrics. I know there's been a huge revival in Pentecostalism and all this. Um, and they accept more than the 27 books of the New Testament. And, uh, but the apocryphal books would be more Old Testament books. But then you've got like the Coptic Church in Ethiopia has some interesting canonicity questions as well. well that's for another subject. But I would just say it was determined by God. His Spirit anointed it, inspired it, and then God's people who had the Spirit and were priests, just as in the Old Testament, priests recognized it. And it was a much earlier process than most understand. And it wasn't somebody finding a letter in Ephesus in 180 AD and saying, hey, this was written by Paul and began to propagate it. So God bless. Thanks for being here. Join us daily. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Do check out our other videos on the channel. God bless you. Bye-bye.